Okay, so let's have a look at question one from the revision sheet that I gave you for learning outcome 1.12 budgets. So we're going to do this for Cara. So we have a budget down here. I have the budget here on this side, just filled in quickly so we can go through it um, quickly for you. So Air, Cara earns a monthly salary of 3,100 and expects to earn a bonus of 2,000 in September. So September. We've got 3,100 and 2,000 to give us 5,100. And then she earns 3,100 and for October, November, and December. So we add these four figures up for our total column. And then at the end, then we'll bring it down here for our total income. She received a dividend of shares of 800 in November. So in November, she gets 800. And then that comes out here in the total column. And then we can add up for September, October, November, December. We can add up our total income here. So we have 5,000 for September, or 5,100 for September, 3,100 for October, 3,900 for November, 3,100 for December, and then when we add up our total column, then we got 15,200. Now this total income will be used later on to help us calculate the net cash. Our next section then is planned expenditure. So we know there's three types of planned expenditure. There's fixed, there's irregular, and there's discretionary. So fixed, we know it's a set amount each month. Irregular, it varies each month, but they're kind of more essential items. And then discretionary then, money that's left over that you kind of, more kind of wants than needs. So irregular and fixed would be needs. Discre or fixed and irregular would be needs. Discretion then would be wants. So in our fixed house, Mortgage is the first one. So our house mortgage of 1,250 decreased by 2% in October. So 1,250 is 100%. So we're going to use 98% to find the October figure. So 1,250 goes in September. Then we're going to take the 1,250. We're going to multiply by 98% because it's decreased by 2%. So because it's 1,225 for October, November, and December. Then you're going to add these four up for your total, which will give you 4,925. House insurance is 600 per year. So we're doing monthly, so we to divide that by 12. So we're going to have 600 divided by 12 will give you 50 euro each month. So that's going to give you a total of 200. Health insurance is 110 per month. So that just goes in for each month, September, October, November, December. And then you're going to add it up at the end to give you 440. Remember, calculate your total just for these three items for a fix. You're going to want to get our subtotal for fixed. So you're going to add up the mortgage house or the mortgage house mortgage house insurance and health insurance to give you 1,410, 1,385 for October, 1,385 for November, 1,385 for December, and then your total is going to be 5,565. Your next one then irregular. So you look at your groceries, 480 per month, except in December when they'll have an additional 400. So 480 for September, 480 for October, 480 for November, 880 for December. Add the four of them up going across and you get 2,320. Car running costs then are next, 85 per month, except in November when the service, and a car service will cost additional 200. So we got 85 for October. September 85 for October, an extra 200 in November, so that's going to be 285, 85 in December, so that's going to give you 540. And then the next and then your household charges will amount to 200 per month. So 200 for September, 200 for October, 200 for November, 200 for December, so it's going to give you 800. So once again, you need to get your subtotals for all your irregulars. So add the groceries, car running costs, and household charges for each one of the months. So September would be 7,600. October, when you add these three together, it'll be 7,600. November, when you add these three together, you get 9,600. December, when you add these three together, you get 11,000. Or sorry, 1,165. And then when you add up your total, you get 3,660. The last one, the discretionary, you got presents, 16th September, 
850 in December. So you got 60, 850. Entertainment is expected to be 300 per month. So September, October, November, December, 300. Gives you 1,200. And then you have a holiday then in September for 1,250. Remember, add up your totals going across and also add up your subtotals. So whatever's in the column for September will give you the subtotal. Whatever's in the column for October will give you the subtotal. Whatever's in the column for November will give you a subtotal. And whatever's in the column for December will give you a subtotal. So these four items together gives you 1,610. We've got 300, we've got 300, we've got 1,150 for December, and your total then is 3,360. So your, your total expenditure then is where you take each of these. You take your subtotal for fixed, you take your subtotal for irregular, and you take your subtotal for discretion, and you add those three up for each of the months. So these three, so you're going to take your subtotal for fixed, subtotal for irregular, and your subtotal for discretion. Add those three up to get your total expenditure. Your net cash then is where you take your total income away from your total expenditure. So you got 5,100, you're going to take away 3,750, and you get 1,350. And you do the same for October, same for November, same for December. You're going to take your total income for October, take away your total expenditure, and that's going to give you net cash. November, you can take your total income, take away your total expenditure, and that's going to give you net cash. And December, total income, take away total expenditure, and that's going to give you net cash. In this question, we have 200 in our opening cash. So your net cash and your opening cash added together will give you a closing cash. Remember, your closing cash for one month becomes your opening cash for the next. Then we add it on to the net cash for that month. Your net cash and your opening cash becomes your closing cash. Your closing cash then becomes your opening cash for the next month. And you continue down long until you get to the end here. So at the end of these three months, our closing cash will be 2,815. And what we want is your total column closing cash figure to be saved as your December. All right. And you're going to put in your opening cash here. So whatever your opening cash is at the start of the month, at the start of the process, is going to be the same for your total column. So these two will always be the same. So always remember your opening cash for the start of the budget will go straight in to your total cash. You need to do that first if you can, so you won't forget about it. And then when you add it on to 2,615, the two of them are the same, so you know it's correct. That's how you answer the first question from the revision sheet for 1.12.